Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is two diseases that make you fearless. And I'm sure it would be interesting to know them. My name is Abzar Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sports Nutrition. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information we share on a weekly basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sports nutrition. Okay, today uh, I have decided to explain to you two different diseases that make you literally fearless. Let's leave the world of common diseases, asthma, migraine, cancer, diabetes, and we go to a different world, the world of rare diseases. The intention is to increase awareness about those rare diseases that some people suffer from them, and actually most of them, they don't know that they have those diseases. Okay. Uh, the two diseases that I'm going to explain to you, they are a very rare in medicine. However, we see them. Uh, they affect the brain. I have in here an illustration, basically, of the brain. In medicine, we classify the brain in uh, five, four lobes. You can see here, we call them frontal lobe. Uh, the green color, we call them parietal lobe. The blue color, we call them temporal lobe. And at the back, we have occipital lobe. At the base and front part of temporal lobe, there is a part of brain. It's called amygdala. Amygdala is a Latin word that means almond shape. So there is a part of the brain that is located at the base of your, at the base of temporal lobe. Front part, we call it amygdala. If you want to reach basically amygdala, uh, here is the basically I could put, let's say this is your ear, if you put your finger here and uh, basically uh, on top of your ear and you dig a hole from there, you're going to get exactly to the amygdala. This part of the brain, amygdala, is, uh, is the center for a couple of things I'm going to put in here. Memory. Memory, especially uh, emotional memories. The center is amygdala. Fear, anxiety, aggression, and actually uh, sexual desire. Okay? So right now you can see if this part of the brain is affected, lots of things is gonna change. So this part of the brain, amygdala, could be affected in two forms, genetic, acquired. Genetic, uh, there is a famous genetic disorder, so I'm going to put in here, so this part of the brain uh, could be affected, uh, I'm going to put in here genetic, and in here we have uh, acquired. That means uh, you do not born with disease of amygdala, you develop disease or damage to amygdala, later in your life. There is a genetic disorder that affects amygdala. Its name is, I'm going to put in here, urbach wyatt disease. This is, this is a very rare genetic disease that is going to pass from generation to generation. Actually, some of those people that they have this disease, they don't know that they have it. Uh, these two, Urbach and Wyatt, they were two Austrian doctors that they described the disease for the first time. Actually, Urbach was a dermatologist and Wyatt was an ENT specialist. What happens is this. In this uh, genetic disorder, we have a mutation. So I'm going to put in here, we have a mutation in, there is a gene, we call it E. CM1 gene. So in this genetic disorder, urbach uh, wyatt disorder, we have mutation in ECM gene, which is located on, we, we show you today, 1Q21. Uh, what does it mean? That means chromosome, long, uh, long arm of the chromosome at the location of 21. You see, uh, you know that we have... Uh, basically 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs of them. And usually this is the, let's say, I'm going to put in here, 
I draw and sort out the chromosomes. Okay, for example, imagine this is our chromosome pair one. Long arm we show with, with P's and uh, some short arms we, we, we show with P's and long arm we show with Q. In people with urbach wyatt disease, there is a mutation in chromosome 1, uh, long arm at the location uh, 21. Basically, a small tiny part of chromosome is missing. That part is basically is responsible for coding this gene. So when there is a mutation in this gene, uh, what happens? Uh, people with urbach wyatt uh, disease, they're going to have two different symptoms. Uh, first of all, it's going to affect their skin. Because of the mutation in ECM1 gene, we're going to have a deposition of, uh, we call it hyaline. Hyaline, it's a glassy, clear substance that is going to sit in the skin. And when hyaline deposits in the skin, uh, it's going to lead to basically tick skins and mostly is going to affect their face, eyes, hands and sometimes the hyaline deposition uh, buildup is going to affect their airways. That's why sometimes the people who suffer from urbach wyatt disease, the first clinical symptoms could be hoarse voice, a husky voice. And the second symptoms that they're going to develop, they're going to develop definitely uh, neurological symptoms and because in people with urbach wyatt disease because of the mutation in this gene we can have calcification in amygdala when amygdala is affected definitely over there you can see they have usually a memory problem but one of the interesting thing that actually they become uh, sort of uh, fearless it is interesting that uh, people uh, who are born with urbach wyatt disease, it's not life-threatening and they can have normal lifespan. So this was the genetic form of uh, damage that may occur in amygdala. However, amygdala could be damaged later in life for some other reasons. For example, because of the tumor. Let's say if someone has a, a, a cancer, right? Or some trauma. Trauma. Alzheimer. Alzheimer could affect amygdala. Brain infection. Brain infection. And sometimes actually poisoning with a carbon monoxide. Okay. Carbon monoxide, you know, is uh, basically, it's, it's very common. We see lots. Of course, if they survive, one of the damage could be damaging amygdala. So if the amygdala is damaged later in life because of the, uh, you know, tumor, a trauma, Alzheimer, brain infection, or poisoning with carbon monoxide, then the name is going to change. The name, it won't be uh, Urbach, why this is anymore. The name it's going to be this. Very famous in medicine, we call it a clover Busey syndrome. Okay. When this part of the brain, amygdala, is damaged because any of those reasons, actually they develop five interesting symptoms. Number one, they literally become fearless because the center for fear in their brain has been damaged. Number two, they forgot very quickly. Number three, they develop a sort of extreme curiosity about anything. Number four, they tend to place everything in their mouth. We call them in medicine hyperorality. And sometimes actually they try to eat uh, solid objects. I don't know, maybe I've seen sometimes uh, those clips in social media that someone is eating a piece of concrete someone is eating uh, glass, maybe they suffer from one of these two diseases, but they do not know. And the fifth symptom of uh, clover abuse syndrome is that people uh, with clover abuse syndrome, they develop uh, a high 
sexual desire. Their sexual drive sometimes becomes so strong that they are forced to have actually sex with other species, animals, cats, dogs, goats. It's not their fault because the part of the brain that actually controls the sexual desires has been damaged. So you can see that if uh, amygdala, a part of the brain that is located at the uh, basically base and front part of the temporal lobe has been damaged because of the genetic disorder or acquired disorder later on, what kind of symptoms they develop. Literally, they become fearless. And I'm not sure, sometimes you see those clips, you know, some people, they do stunts or acrobatic movements in high-rise building without safety harnesses. Maybe they suffer from one of these two. And usually, as I said, they become fearless. They are afraid of nothing. You put them in a haunted house. Let's say you put them in a poisonous tarantula in their hands. They're afraid of nothing. And to manage their behavior, usually we need a uh, medical team, especially neurologist and psychiatrist. The intention was to increase awareness about rare diseases. And right now, you know at least two of them. I'm gonna come back later on with more uh, interesting rare diseases. We make science easy to understand, now you know. If you don't wanna miss our weekly videos, you may subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.